Good evening, good evening. It is another great Friday night. Whoo, time is flying by. Friday after Friday after Friday. But, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, Linda. Sister Delena, good to see you. All right. Everybody finally getting in here, 7 o'clock for on a Friday night. Sister Lisa, good to see you. Sister Collins. All right. Andrea, good to see you. Man, I miss y'all. Seems like it's been forever. Detra, how you doing? Sister Cunningham. Lori, good to see you. Yeah, buddy, we've been going through. Sherry Bell, good to see you. Hope everybody's doing good tonight. Sister Patricia, Diane, all right. Um, tonight, our scripture reference, I always like to have a basis for it, is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, beginning of verse 1. And... Uh, we find that 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning of verse 1. That's where we're going to start our scripture in just a moment. Yeah, just a moment. We'll start there. 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning of verse 1. 1 through 4. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Sister Jazz, how you doing? All right. Well, I hope you got your, your scripture turned there. And 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. We'll start there and then we'll pray and get started. But Leroy, good to see you. The word of the Lord from uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning at 1. It reads, Therefore I exhort... All that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and the giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. All right. So that's our, our scripture, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And let's pray. And we'll get everybody going. Eternal God, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for your blessed Holy Spirit that has kept us throughout this day. Thank you for uh, just being God all by yourself. We honor you, bless you, thank you for it. God, tonight, I pray you would lead uh, the, our time of chat tonight. I'm uh, praying that it will be encouraging, that it will be insightful um, and challenging to each and every one who's on the call, uh, both those who watch tonight and those who may watch later on. Um, just allow us, God, to enjoy each other's company and presence tonight in the time of our chat. Uh, we commit all things to you, Lord, and ask your blessing and your favor and your direction in them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, guess what? We have a new president and a new vice president. I know you guys are just rolling over with excitement and beaming with joy for all this new change that's coming. So tonight, 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 I just want to talk about new leadership. I want to talk about this whole inauguration and new leadership and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, just a little time of reflection. I'm going to talk about that tonight. And just in case you missed our scripture reference, it was from 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 4 uh, for this evening. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. So, tonight, 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 let's see. So, we got a new president. Everybody, um, you know, the whole inauguration piece was, you know, it was, it was, it was interesting in some ways. Um, different. Yeah, a lot of history being made, a lot of different things happening. Um, you know, thousands and thousands of National Guard troops being present, no people present. 
They had the whole field laid out with flags. I don't know, 400,000 flags or something like that. Um, that was pretty uh, strange, you know, to me, you know, seeing that. And actually from far away, it kind of almost looked like a bunch of people. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, they kind of zoomed in, let you see, hey, nothing but flags. Um, so it kind of kept everybody away, which probably was a good thing, um, not just because of the attempted coup, uh, that happened a few weeks ago, but um, probably because of the virus and, you know, too many people being in close proximity and all that probably was, yeah, probably was just a good thing that it was done that way. Um, so it was, um, yeah, different in that regard and, and, and quite, quite different <laughs> in that there was, you know, just not so many people there. I'm guessing most people probably watched it on um, TV. I think pretty much most of the day, I think I had um, the television on um, watching some part portion of it, trying to, you know, keep up. And um, it was good. It was good. It was, I thought it was, uh, it, I thought the inaugural procedure program, whatever you call it, um, was, I thought it was well done. Yeah, I thought it was well done. It was, uh, yeah, it was fluid. It was, it, it was interesting. And, um, you know, this is just my observation. The singers were good. Um, I thought all the, the singers did a great job. Um, the, uh, what was her name? Um, uh, um, man, I can't think of her name now. Anyway, um, yeah, y'all know who sang. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Lady Gaga, um, I thought she did a great job um, singing. And then, um, uh, uh, what's her name from the block? Um, I can't remember her name right now. Man, my mind is just gone blank. But anyway, yeah, I thought she did a great job singing. And then uh, the country singer came and sang. Uh, he, I thought he did a good job. Um, I, I just everybody seemed like they just did Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, J Lo. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I couldn't think of that. Yeah, y'all, y'all. I knew y'all knew. I knew y'all knew. Yeah, J Lo. Um, and and she, yeah, I thought she did. She did awesome. I thought it was great. That was great. She did a great job. Um, her outfit was banging. I mean, yeah, they dressed up nicely, and you know, Lady Gaga always does her own little thing too. And I thought the. The little dove and the um, and the uh, olive branch design on her little lapel, that joint was like, that was a statement. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Um, I never, I don't think I ever heard her sing before. Um, not a Lady Gaga fan, but I mean, her voice was incredible. I thought she did, she did a great job. And then, like I said, Jennifer Lopez, she did good. Garth Brooks, that's the country western dude. Yeah, Garth Brooks. Um, who came out there and he did, I thought he did a great job. And so all of this, you know, all that was, you know, just well, fluidly organized, um, you know, bringing the people out, all of those kind of things. I thought that was good. It was well done. Um, it was just interesting to watch the interaction. I tell you what was the, the awkwardness of the whole thing, watching it, um, was watching Mike Pence, like sit there in the middle of everybody else. Um, I thought that was like weird. Like I, I'm, I'm thinking, man, if I'm him, like what's, what's going on in his mind? Like, is he thinking, man, I should have never came here. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. He, he was like, that, that, that President Trump set me up. Um, but no, I tell you what, I got much, much respect for him um, for being there, for being um, presidential, for being professional, because guess what? Um, oftentimes, you know, being in that professional role or position, it's not always easy. It's not always, um, you know, the light role, and it's not always, you know, what you signed up for. But um, I got much respect for him for stepping up to the plate and handling his business and being present. Um, listen. I, if you don't learn something from that too, learn something from the fact that he was present because the, what we call the theology of presence means a lot. A lot of times the reasons why people miss out on 
the opportunities and miss out on being able to be represented is because they're not present. They don't show up. Now, it would have been easy for him, you know, even as a vice president, say, hey, the president ain't going. I ain't going. I'm, I didn't run the country. He could have easily just, just backed away and did that. But I got much respect for him. You know, I you know, question, you know, well, he, he was loyal. I mean, I question some of his you know, loyalty because I think his loyalty took him off point. But at the same time, the dude did his job. He, he handled his business. He was there. He represented. Um, yeah, I think something is to be said about him. Um, I know we just want to blow the whole administration out, throw the whole baby out with the bathwater, but you got to give him some props. He, he showed up. He was there. He handled his business. And, yeah, and I know he had to be, like, super-duper awkward sitting there with everybody else and all the stuff that was going on. And then, like, a lot of when everybody was coming out and, like, greeting and blah, 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 you know, you got three former presidents there. I think it's three. And everybody's, like, dapping them up and, you know, the first former first ladies and all that. And they're like, oh, yeah, and you. <laughs> yeah, so he had to feel like kind of awkward. And I think he was kind of sitting behind Kamala as well. But, yeah, he had to be, you know, kind of the, the, the most – uncomfortable person in the uh <laughs> at the inauguration on that on that platform but again like i said give him his props I, I i i respect him for what he did um and being there being present handling his business yeah great job mike pence yes do your thing dude um don't know where he's going after this i heard he didn't doesn't even own property so i'm guessing he's off looking for a new house um but yeah i give him his props for being there and, of course, the young lady who stole the whole show uh, of the inauguration was little Miss Amanda Gorman, 22-year-old poet, who was the bomb.com. I mean, from her hair, you know, her hairdo, her little Borat or whatever thing was on her hair, to that bright yellow banging coat she had on that seemed like it was it was spray painted on she she wore that joint she was beautiful she was she was pristine she was professional um i mean wow she took the stage at a at a an event such as this at the age of 22 and just blew it out the water i mean wow now let me tell you something this this is just something something i learned from you know being an athlete one of the things about ath in, in athletics you know a lot of times we would always have to um you know dress like if we went to a sporting event when i was wrestling we go to our event we had to dress up for that day and all that and you know same thing for some other things so one of the things i learned in athletics is um dressing well is the beginning of your victory okay your 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 presence you know if you got a uniform your uniform needs to be you know well clean you need to be looking good you need to be prim you need to be bang um and you know that's like part of the battle okay so you got your uniform everything straight you clean you you know well groomed all that stuff boom you you you're it's part of the battle um, and so for this young lady, um, her, first of all, <laughs> and before she even opens her mouth, her appearance spoke volumes of her. Okay. So, cause first of all, I'm thinking to myself, you go to an event like this and you wear a canary yellow coat, like, you know, all eyes are going to be on you. So you better have your stuff together. You get up there with a canary yellow coat and, and start stuttering and mess up your poem and you have to start over five times. You just blew it. But now nah, this girl, she handled it from the top to the bottom. I mean, everything. I'm not sure who. I'm, maybe she's just like, you know, super duper particular about her um, appearance. But she was, yeah, everything. I mean, she was she was on it. And then when she opened up her mouth, praise the Lord, hallelujah. The girl could speak well, even though I understand she has overcome an, a speech impediment. 
um, that she struggled with up to age 20, which is another just amazing and phenomenal thing to have witnessed that this young lady is standing there like blowing the world away with her poetry and with her with her dignified professional look and she is just killing it i mean like killing it so i'm sure her you know poem is going to be played over and 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 over again and I know for y'all fashionistas, y'all probably trying to Google where y'all can get one of them coats. It ain't going to look the same on you. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but, and the little hair piece. Yeah, you know, folks be looking up everything. Like, they, everybody try to scoop what, what they see people having. Because um, I, I, I heard they were trying to scoop the, uh, the necklace that Kamala Harris had on. And somebody did some research on it and found out that that neck is like special made or something. It's like $47,000. I'm like, no way in the world. But anyway, so y'all want to be like, you know, the famous people of the world. You got to, I guess you do your homework. She probably got that coat from, I don't know, Lloyd and Taylor or something. I don't know. Who knows? It was nice. It was banging. The girl was on fire. I mean, that's all I can say. She was on fire. I wish I could get her to come to Kettering and, you know, maybe come do some poetry for us. Who knows? Maybe we'll be able to get that. Maybe, hey, maybe some of y'all know her or something. Maybe somebody know her, get her, get her come. You know, maybe we can get her to, when all this pandemic stuff is over, we can get her to come and, hey, read some poetry and inspire some of our young people. She was on fire. She, she stole the show. Okay, hands down. She stole the show. She, she did her business. She handled her business. Her poem was, was on point. It was relevant. It was, it was uh, today, modern day, she included, you know, what was happening right now and today. And she even included in there, I hope y'all ain't missed this part, she even included her own aspiration, her own aspiration to be president someday herself. But right now, I like this, she said, but right now, I'm reciting to one. Woo, look at that. Because you never know how God's going to make a way for you. Lord, have mercy. And that's why I say you got to show up. Sometimes it's just a matter of being present. And she showed up and showed out and put her, I mean, hey, she put her aspirations out in front of the world. I'm running for president. She even told them what year. She running for president. When she's going to be eligible, she running for the president. That's what I call character, dignity, confidence. But not overconfident. Confidence in, the, in, in who she is and what she's capable of. Boom. We all can learn something from her. <sighs> Hats off to Miss Amanda Gorman. Praise the Lord, the girl is on fire. <clears throat> Just keep praying for her because I think she's going to do some great stuff if um, she gets nurtured and, 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 and stuff right. And again, as the Lord's will, who knows? You might be looking at her, you know, standing up there as president one, time, one year, you know, down the road. She might, be, actually, she might actually make it to be the president of the United States herself. And somebody will be reading to her. Lord, have mercy. But, hey, good. That's good stuff. And I know I'm not the only one when the former Obama presidential team, well, I'm going to call them team, husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Obama, when they came down and they stood on the platform, I know I'm not the only one that had a reminiscent thought like, oh, my God. The Obamas are back. I mean, that was cool. And, man, they are just the coolest people. Like, they are just, just cool. Michelle dressed to the nine. She's always always been that way. She brought fashion to the White House in a way that it has never seen before and probably won't see for a long time. But she she was, and, and you know, Barack, he just cool dude. He got swag. And they just, you know, they was they was doing their thing. So that was all great, all fine, all wonderful. Um, just, you know, watching the inauguration, watching all the interaction and um, the swearing in, you know, part. Hey, here's something I thought was pretty cool. And then I was thinking about this. Uh, I'm I, just thinking about it. Um, when they swore in uh, President Biden, 
um, he had a hundred, I think it's in a 150 year old Bible that they used to swear in, swear men on it. I'm thinking, how, are, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, do we have, I'm thinking to my, about my own family. Do we have any Bibles that old, like in our family, 150 years old that, you know, maybe somebody, grandmother, grandmother, grandmother had? I don't know. I'm just, I was just trying to figure out like, the Bible they had was like, that was like an encased, looked like a wood something on the top. It was, whatever it was, that joint was serious. That was a serious Bible. Um, 150 years old. But then I started thinking about this. I said, you know, um, perhaps we do need to make sure we're preserving some of our family Bibles, um, you know, for years down the road. And then, I don't, you know, who knows whether or not people are even respecting them, maybe they're just taking them and throwing them out. Um, Cause I know I have a lot of Bibles and Hey, maybe 150 years from now, my grandkids and great, 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 great grandkids might want to read through my Bible and read some of my notes from some of the sermons I have written. And I don't know, maybe it'll be some classic piece for them somewhere down the road, or maybe not. Maybe they'll just <laughs> go through my stuff and throw it in the trash. I don't know. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool that they still had a 150 year old Bible to swear in on. And, um, yeah, that was just interesting. Just interesting things that, you know, I was just kind of observing with the, you know, inauguration. And the other thing I'm going to say that, um, you know, about the inauguration, I'm thinking to myself, um, well, a couple other things. One thing I thought was kind of interesting when um, the, the vice president, Kamala Harris, and her husband had to walk the pences out so they can go get in the car and go go bye-bye. That was another little awkward moment there. Um, you know, being there's like a lot of bad blood and stuff, but they did everything to handle it all well. And then I'm thinking, I'm, cause I'm watching like, uh, Jill Biden, the, the president's, um, um, uh, wife first, the new first lady, man, she was walking like her feet was hurting. And I'm thinking <laughs> this is a long day. And she had her, you know, high heel shoes or the stuff like that. And I'm thinking, Bob, I know she can't wait till she get in that car and take them shoes off her feet because they had to go from, you know, the Capitol or whatever, get over to the uh, tomb of the unknown, unknown soldier and they had to get back out and walk again. And it, and it was cold. Um, so I'm thinking to myself, I know her feet was killing her. I was kind of expecting by the time they got to the, um, you know, White House or whatever and they do their final walk that she would have took them high heels off. See, if she was a sister, she would have had some tennis shoes in the car and she would have took them high heels off and she would either have some tennis shoes or some flats. Yeah, that's what y'all call them, flats. She would have had some flats and she would have been walking in flats all the way back up to the White House because them, them four-inch heels would have been done for the day, okay? Uh, but she hung in there. I got to give Jill, Dr. Jill, her props. She hung in there. Although I know she had to put some Epsom salt on them feet at the end of the day because she was walking like they was hurting her. Amen. But I, hey, that's all the part. Hey, your husband is the president. You got to do what you got to do. So she did it, handled her business. And yeah, so it was a day of people handling their business and doing their thing, um, you know, looking, you know, classy and looking, uh, you know, and doing what they had to do. So that's why I said, you know, as I looked at everything, um, you know, the whole evaluation of the whole inauguration, I just, I thought, man, this is really nice. This is a lot of nice stuff, a lot of nice observations. I mean, even, you know, even Kamala, she didn't, she didn't wear a pantsuit. Praise the Lord. She, she had a dress on. She was really nicely dressed. Um, the color was nice on her, all that stuff, husband, all that. Now, I will say her her stepdaughter, her coat was a little bit, I wasn't really feeling that coat she had on. But everybody else, you know, they, they did their thing. And it was cool. I, together, everything, I thought, you know, everything was good. And, yeah, everybody, like, joked, um, uh, what's his name, Bernie. Uh, but Bernie was warm, let me tell you. Bernie, y'all talk about Bernie if y'all want to, but Bernie was warm. I don't know why he didn't have a hat on. But he had his mittens on and he had his coat on. He had his little, you know, um, I don't know where he got the coat from. Somebody said he got it from Burlington Coat Factory. I don't care where he got it from. It looked like it was a warm coat and he had his mittens on. Now, the only thing I don't know is why Bernie bought mail to the inauguration. B Bernie had mail. I guess Bernie said, I I'm, I'm going to go to this inauguration. I got business to do. I ain't, I ain't fooling around this stuff all day. 
But Bernie bought some mail. He had, he had picked up some mail, and, and uh, yeah, they 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 joked him all day. They gave him a hard time. But I don't know, Bernie. Bernie, he did you know? He he did what he had to do. He was there at least. Again, he was present. He you know he might look a little funny with his mittens and all that on, but he was there. Give him give him his props. Um, yeah. So you know. So together all day, all the stuff that went on, um, great. Just, I thought it was nice, you know, the little gift giving part. I thought that was really nice. They didn't get to have, have the chance to do their little um, luncheon. Um, but then they, um, you know, did a little gift giving and everybody, you know, gave gifts. And I thought that was just nice. It was really a nice event. It really was, you know, overall, even though it wasn't normal, and that's one of the things I like some some about, you know, COVID has messed up a lot of things in some ways. It's it's made things different, um, but some things they kind of need needed some freshness to them. And I just say, hey, you know, some of the things they did differently with the inauguration, it just brought some sense of freshness to it. And it was nice. So it was cool. And, you know, so everything's not bad. You know, we we we, we doing some, you know some exciting times and enjoyable things, even in the midst of COVID. Some things just needed to be changed anyway and do things different ways. So it's, it's cool. So my thing is, I thought overall the inauguration was, it was nice. It was a really nice day, really great. Now I missed the, I was looking for the um, little um, virtual across America thing. And I don't know, I think I got into some uh, some studying. I was you know, doing some studying and stuff like that. And I turned all TV off and all that stuff. And by the time I turned it back on, it was like, oh, hey. and I caught the end of it. But I, I guess I guess that was a nice show, too. It seemed like it was pretty nice. Where the Bidens, they were watching from inside the White House and they had a little TV set up. And I guess they had different um, people performing from all over the place. So I missed all that part, but I guess that was pretty nice, too. But like I said, I think it was a great, it was a great day. It was refreshing. Um, you know, it was a refreshing day uh, of, uh, of, of, of political fanfare and events and stuff like that. So, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was good. Um, and now let me, let me talk about some of this stuff, like, cause I, you know, really talk about our new leadership. Um, so yeah, the inauguration was good, but then I'm thinking, okay, now Joe Biden is the oldest inaugurated president in American history uh, at 78 years old, 78 years and 61 days, I think it was, um, old when he was inaugurated. He is the oldest president inaugurated, oldest person inaugurated to president of the United States ever, um, ever. Um, and the, you know, I kept hearing him say, you know, oh, yeah, he this was his second run for presidency. I was thinking, when did he run for president before? I couldn't even remember. So I had to look it up. So back in 1988, 1987, um, he launched a presidential campaign. Um, didn't last long. I think I said it ran about three months. I didn't didn't even remember that. So he was in. He was out. Probably like a lot of these people who ran with his last one. We had all those people in the Democratic Party who ran for president, some of the names you don't even know, you probably never will remember. But anyway, so 1988, for, well, or for the 1988 Democratic uh, position, he ran, but he dropped out after three months. And then um, George W. Bush won that year. Um, the first Bush um, won the election, 1988. And so... Um, but Joe Biden hung around, you know, he's, you know, served 37 years or whatever it is. And then finally, you know, he became vice president and finally became president. So, hey, he, you know, he uh, stayed there and persevered. His is a lesson of perseverance. We can learn a lot from all this. And, you know, like I said, I'm watching all this stuff going on. I'm trying, you know, what, what lessons can we take from, take away from it? It's a lesson of perseverance um, just because you don't win. The first time or maybe don't even do well or not even remember it the first time doesn't mean to give up. He didn't give up. So he kept persevering and here he is. And, you know, everybody says, oh, he's too old and this and that and other. But now he's setting records. He's the oldest dude. Up. They're doing it. And so, yeah. And, you know, I was thinking with, for like 
um, President Biden and his family, <clears throat> excuse me, how it must have felt going into that White House, knowing that um, you are, <clears throat> excuse me, following, you know, President Trump, like they just left this morning. And I'm thinking, like, what was he thinking? Like, you know, because I'm thinking to myself, and I know that, that I guess other people must have been thinking the same thing, because one of the things they said, like, right off the bat, they was like, they sanitized the White House. <laughs> like, yeah, they, they've they been working hard. I think they had, I think they said they had well over 100 um, staffers cleaning and sanitizing the White House from nine. Cause I think, um, I think president Trump left at like nine, nine 30 in the morning. So from between nine and like three, they had to get that whole thing clean and, you know, get stuff changed out and all that. And, um, yeah, so I was thinking, man, <laughs> y'all better do a good job, you know, going in. Cause you know, they didn't want to wear masks. They didn't want to do nothing like that. And they were just contaminating stuff and, and then, I, I don't know, just me, I, it would be kind of weird, like, going in somebody else, where somebody else was, you know, lived yesterday um, or this morning, and now I got to live here. So, yeah, I, just, I was just kind of thinking, maybe it's just me, I was just kind of thinking, I wonder how he felt about that. And, of course, they do change out all the mattresses and sheets and everything, all that stuff they change out. I think even some of the furniture... Um, if they want to have changed out, which I understand the, the Bidens didn't, they haven't finished doing a rec redecoration um, because they wanted to get right to work. But um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I think that would have been kind of weird, like going into the White House, like knowing they were there this morning and they were living here. Now we're going to spend the night and we living here. It's kind of, kind of an odd thing. Um, but, you know, like I said, they did, you know, did their due diligence. They did their sanitation and cleaned up everything. And the worst part I'm thinking for, for Joe Biden is when you finally get in there and find out, like, all the stuff that's messed up. You know, because, like, in the presidency, so, and, you know, they cover up a lot of stuff. And then when, when like, the next guy comes in, they find out, <coughs> oh, all this was messed up. I tell you the worst case of that. The worst case of that that I can remember that that happened was when President Obama took office. Okay, um, when George Bush the second, the son, was president, and the the economy was like in a disaster, but they weren't telling anybody that it was in a disaster. And then it's like the day after uh, President Obama got elected, it was like, oh yeah, by the way. Um, the economy is in the worst condition it's ever been in in the history of the United States. See you later. <laughs> and, then, and so I'm sure he was like, oh, my God. And But I mean, hey, he did a great job with it and turned everything around. And of course, by the time uh, President Trump got in office, he was benefiting from the turnaround of the economy and of the jobs and all that stuff, even though he took credit for it. It really wasn't his to have credit for. It was a it was a, was a result of the eight years of rebuilding the country's e economy and reestablishing the wheels of um, of the economy that he actually benefited from. That's that's my uh, political opinion. Okay, I'm not, I'm not a politician, but anyway. So I'm just curious, like you know, how he felt when they pulled back the covers and said, "Hey, this is what what they left. This is this is what you got to deal with." Like this COVID joint, like they found out, hey, they didn't have a, none of the vaccines they said they had. They didn't, they didn't have a plan for how they were going supposed to execute. There was just like no plan um, and just a whole mess. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because I'm sure it's a whole, whole, whole lot more stuff that he found out after he got in there. Like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. But that's why we got to pray for him and pray for um, the next four years. Gotta pray for him. Cause I'm sure there's a lot, lot that you probably never will know that were challenges and problems and blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's that. Now here's another thing I was thinking about. Cause okay, here, here's the other side. Okay, we have, excuse me. 
We have the oldest um, president that was inaugurated, 78 years old and 61 days. But we also have history, more history. We have the first woman vice president ever in the history of America. And she, she brings history in multiple ways. She is the first uh, woman. She is the first uh, black woman. She is the first, um, what do they call her? Um, South Asian combination, South Asian something. Indi Indo-Asian, Indian and Asian woman. So she, she first all that. She, she the first all that. Um, first, um, HBCU, AKA <laughs> vice president, gang member, whatever. Uh, first. she's, she bring a whole lot of firsts to the office and, um, she's only 56 years old. Um, you know, she's kind of a fast burner. She's done a whole lot of stuff. Um, you know, and she's only 56 years old um, and she's vice president of the United States. And I'm thinking, but, she, you know, like she does. Ha she has no biological children of her own. She, she never had any children, which I guess her career has always been her, you know, her baby, so to speak. So I guess she sacrificed having children for her career, um, which is, yeah, I guess, her choice. She got she got stepkids, though. So so she got, you know, married to this dude. And they got the stepkids, okay? So, now here's the deal I was thinking about now. <laughs> I was thinking about this this morning. I was thinking, what if, what if um, your stepmother, who you really didn't like that much, um, and you was cutting up, you know, like you were a teen or a young adult, and you cutting up, and you don't, you, you know, you got a stepmother, and you don't really like her that much. And all of a sudden, now, you <laughs> She's the vice president of the United... You wake up one morning and she's the vice president of the United States. And I'm like, man, that's a spot to be in. <laughs> um, you know, to to have your stepmother <laughs> to be the, the vice president of the United States. And if, and if you was cutting up too, I mean, it's one thing, you know, for your... <laughs> like your, your, your biological father to say, hey... You know, these are my kids, blah, blah, blah. But hey, now it's, all, it's the kind of role reversal. She's the vice president. So she's like, look, I'm the vice president. Like, you know how stuff kids be like telling their stepmothers, who do you think you are? I can hear that playing out. Who do you think you are? And she say, I'm Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States. You better get your act together. So I don't know. I'm sure that's got some interesting twists and turns with the family, with the kids. You know, obviously, in the public eye, they have presented that everybody's great. Have, you know, whole family works well. And instead of them calling her Kamala, they call her Mamala. It's because they didn't want to call her stepmom, which I get that. You know, some people just call, you know, their mom, mom or dad, dad or whatever. They don't have to do all the step part. But I was just kind of, it was just, you know, I'm thinking that in my mind how awkward and weird that would have been. Like, <laughs> if they had some tension and now she's the vice president. Like they can't say nothing to her. She 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 rules. So, but yeah, I think that's cool. And then you know her husband, he's a cool dude. I mean, hats off to him too because you know he has to give up. He had to give up his his job and all that to you know support her in her run for the, when she ran for the presidency. And then even now, um, you know, giving up his his um, job and stuff like that and. And I thought that was, you know, that's admirable. Um, of course, you know, they're going to get props and benefits, obviously, from it. Um, but nevertheless, I think that's an admirable um, thing that he did. He's a, he's a real trooper, um, you know. And, you know, you kind of, I don't know, the, the, the vice presidential spouse is usually really not a person you kind of see around doing anything much ever anyway. So I guess he can kind of, hide off he's supposed to go teach at the school here i think and um do something like that 
But, you know, I saw Mike Pence's wife at the inauguration, and I'm thinking this is the first time I've seen her maybe since the first time they got inaugurated. I never saw her. Where was she at, like, the whole four years? Anybody, anybody know where she was at? Because I never saw her. Um, she was, like, never in the public eye. Like, what, did she, like, go, move back home to... Well, I don't know. She didn't move home because they didn't have a home. I don't know where she was at. She never saw her. But anyway... I don't know. I guess that's how it, how it you know goes. But anyway, so we got some interesting stuff coming up. Um, we got all the new presidency. Got the migration. All that stuff is over with. Now we got to deal with all the problems. You know, with the COVID virus, with the people uh, unemployment, with the you know people can't eat and people getting put out their houses and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot this is going on. So we got a lot to go deal with. But now let me say this because um, um, I'm going to call many of you into repentance tonight. Okay. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says, I read it earlier from um, first Timothy chapter two. It says, um, I exhort you to um, first of all, that supplication, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. I've read that, remember? So tonight, tonight, I'm going to call many of you, not all of you, I'm going to call many of you into repentance because, okay, let me tell you why you need to repent. You need to repent because for the last four years, you did not do what the scripture said you were supposed to do. You did not pray for President Trump. Matter of fact, some of you wouldn't even mention his name. You disrespected him. You wouldn't even mention his name. And I know you said, well, he disrespected us. Well, that's not the point. The point is you should have been praying for that man. You should have been, um, you should have been respecting him and his, and, and mentioning his name and all the other stuff. You shouldn't just been calling him 45. You need to repent tonight, okay? Praise the Lord. We got a new president, new vice president, all the great stuff that happened. Wonderful, wonderful. But you need to repent, okay? So let's not go into this new presidency and this new thing with all that old stuff, okay, on our shoulders, okay? So you need to repent, repent, repent for the way you hated the guy the way you didn't respect him as the leader, the way you did not. But well, remember, the scripture says, not only should we have been praying and interceding for them, but we should have been giving thanks for him, okay? We should have been giving thanks, um, should have been made for him. Repent, repent, repent. All right, this time you're guilty, 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 guilty. Get. Repent, Lord, up right down right where you are, Take a moment. Here we go. Lord, in the name of Jesus, please forgive all of those who were guilty of not praying and, for, and thank, being thankful for the president we just now had. Lord, in the name of, of Jesus, we repent and let that go so we can move on and do things right this time. All right. So now I, I hope you did repent. OK, <laughs> I pray you took the time and the moment. I'm kind of playing with y'all, but seriously, I'm not playing with you. I'm serious. We do need to have this thing in order, okay? And regardless of how you felt about um, President Trump, regardless of how, you know, whether you liked him, didn't like him, whether that was your party or not your party, okay, let's get this thing straight. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's get it straight. So when we go into this next four years, we have it right. We don't have this stuff lingering behind us, okay? So we get clear the air. All right, now we need to move forward, okay? So what I'm going to, we, we need to, we really do, we need, really need to pray for our president. I'm going to give you some suggestions of some things to be praying for, uh, and you can add to the list whatever it is that you want to add. Um, but I'm going to just give you a, 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 just a short little list, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven maybe things. Um, that you could be praying for, uh, for the president and for the vice president uh, and the leadership uh, administration. Uh, but specifically for the president, vice president, um, <clears throat> seven things, I think it's seven things here. Um, you know, get a pen or something, write it down, put it on your phone, whatever, um, that you could be praying for, 
for the president and vice president over the next four years. And we should be praying regular, regularly and being thankful regularly, not because we like them or we don't like them, but because the scripture tells us we should. OK, um, and we want to be praying and um, and and doing this right. So first of all, let's let's be one of the suggestions. These are just suggestions, seven suggestions. Um, pray for health and well-being and, and rest for the president and vice president. Pray for their health, for their well-being, and for their adequate rest. Okay? Write this down now. Write these things down. For the health, well-being, and, and adequate rest uh, for the president. One of the things that um, I've heard said that uh, the serving, in pres the serving as president, the stress level, uh, for serving as the president is so high that it takes 10 years off a, off a person's life. And it's interesting if you watch those who've gone into the uh, presidential circle, how, how they've aged. Um, you know, Barack Obama went in with black hair and in four years his hair turned white. Now, I don't know if he was using just for men before that or not, but he wasn't that old. So it, it ages you. So the stress level does age you. But so pray for their health, pray for their well-being. Um, pray, secondly, that he stays focused on his faith. Uh, Joe Biden is a man of strong faith. Um, and I believe Kamala Harris is a woman of faith as well. Um, but just continue that they stay focused on their faith because the busyness of the, the presidential office and the business of running the country and the business of the politics can, can draw a person away from their faith. So pray that they stay focused on their faith. Okay, that's the second thing. Third, pray for wisdom in their leading. Just pray that God will provide them spiritual wisdom um, in leading the country um, and making decisions and choices and things like that. So pray for, 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 for wisdom in their leading. Pray for their families, um, their husband, their wife, their children, stepchildren, uh, grandchildren. Pray for their families as well, because obviously this role and this weight of responsibility that is now thrust on them um, there's also ramifications for the family. And so pray for their families um, and even that they're, you know, able and capable of continuing to maintain a strong uh, bond in their families. Because, again, the weight of leadership sometimes can pull families apart. Um, and so, yeah, pray for the families as well. Uh, pray for his integrity and her integrity. Pray for their integrity of the president, the integrity of the president, the vice president, that they will live um, and walk in integrity in their leadership. Um, that's something we, we didn't see uh, in the last um, four years. And it's something that's very much needful, not only for the presidential, but I think for all leadership, but even more so for the country at large, um, because that integrity that is displayed through leadership is contagious, okay? and the lack thereof. Uh, if there's no integrity at the leadership level, there's likely not going to be integrity below. Um, and so pray for the integrity of our uh, leaders, uh, president, vice president. Um, pray for uh, their favor with both parties um, so that we don't become a, a political uh, gridlocking uh, based on party lines as we've seen through the eight years of the president of Obama's administration and, and pretty much um, the four years of the um, Trump administration. It's just been strictly party line. Um, and so pray, pray that there's favor um, on, with them as leaders with both parties, um, that they can you know get some, some things accomplished. And then finally, I want to say, pray that they both be willing to follow God's will. Um, there's going to be some choices and decisions that they both will have to make. And that uh, they, they're going to need God's wisdom and will. They're going to need the desire to follow the Lord's will. And, and, and listen, all, it's not always easy um, to follow the Lord's will when you're in a position of leadership. And so pray that they're uh, following and willing to follow the Lord's will uh, in their leadership. So these are just seven things I think I've shared. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven things um, that I think is it would be helpful um, to pray for, for our president and vice president and their administration. 
Uh, and you can add to that list. Uh, and whatever it is, you know, in ways in which you pray for them and uh, throughout their administration, you know, try to be faithful to it. Um, because here's the thing. The interesting thing is in the text that I read for you earlier today, um, Second Timothy, I mean, First Timothy chapter two, in that passage, um, the prayers for the leadership, it says it impacts your life and my life. So it says, as we pray for them and all who are in authority, it allows us to have a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. And here's the kicker. It says, this is, this is the will of God. This is, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. This is what God wants. Um, so our prayers and our encouragements for them impact our own lives and our own peaceableness um, and our own godliness and reverence. So, yeah. So we want to want to be prayerful um, for these leaders that we now have, and um, you know, do our part. Um, you may not ever make it to the White House, but you can pray for those that are there, and you can still impact um, you know the world through our prayers, um, through the, the prayers of the saints. And so I think those just some things I think we should be doing, um, some things we need to do. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we, um, those of you who had not been doing it, you repented of it. Amen. <laughs> um, but no, cool. Hopefully this has been good, guys. I, you know, just wanted to kind of talk about our new leadership and whole new process and where we are and looking forward to what's coming. And so I just want to, you know, hey, encourage us all in all that we've seen this week and grow from the things that we can learn from and seen and in, in, you know, different people and different situations so that we all can be blessed and uh, we all can kind of walk through 2021 different um, as it relates to how we've been impacted and how, uh, you know, even the events of the inauguration and the new presidency and all this um, help can help change us. So that's my chat for tonight, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me. It's been great. Um, again, just, uh, seeing your comments and, uh, having you guys chime in here and there and helping me through some of them names I couldn't remember. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But anyway, um, let me pray for you, um, because I want to make sure that God is covering you and that you know that uh, me, I as a pastor, as your pastor, so many of you, I'm your pastor. Some of you, I am not your pastor yet, but keep hanging out. You might just come on over. And we're always willing to have you join us. It's not, you know, we'd love for you to be a part of our, our ministry at Kettering. And so, um, but nevertheless, let me pray for you um, because I love you and I want the best for you. So, uh, let's pray. Eternal God, we are thankful today just for our time we've had to hang out and chat about uh, this uh, new presidency and the new leaders. And I pray, God, you will lead each person under the sound of my voice in being found faithful um, to commit to praying for them and to commit to uh, caring about the leadership that you have ordained to be in place. And so, Spirit of God, I pray for each one that is listening, each one that is tuned in that you will meet their family's needs. Uh, God, I know that there is a variety of situations going on with families. There's loss of loved ones, uh, and there's hurt, and there's pains, and there's grief, and there's uh, unemployment, and there's lack of food, and there's uh, evictions, and there's health concerns, and mental health concerns. And just all kinds of issues we're dealing with right now. The issues with school and our kids getting back in school or not. Those teachers um, being concerned about getting going back to school and all the tensions that are all around us, God. We just are in such a need of you. And so I pray and lift up everyone that's listening, everyone that's connecting, everyone who's tuning in. And praying that you would just give grace to each one of them. That you would show favor to each one of them that you would give perspective to each one of them, God, to understand and realize though things may be bad, it could be a whole lot worse 
and you are a keeper in the midst of it all. And even as you have promised in your word that you will supply our need, <clears throat> you have been doing that and you have been blessing us. So Spirit of the Lord, meet each need and each expectation. I pray you would even exceed it. Grow us in grace, grow us in the wisdom and knowledge of you every day that we might be drawn closer to walk like you and talk like you. Now, God, bless us as we leave and keep us in the center of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Again, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you guys tonight, and uh, I'll see you on Sunday. And, oh, yeah, by the way, for those of you who um, Sunday service last week was just, uh, it was it had a corrupted file or something, and you never got to see the sermon, guess what? We They did correct it. We did get that corrected, and they, we did put it back up on Facebook so you can view it on Facebook for those of you who have Facebook. And it is also up on the church website so you can view it on the church website. Uh, I know a lot of people were disappointed that they didn't get a chance to see the whole service. And so I just want to um, put that plug in and let you know it is out there to, to be watched. Um, you can you know, watch it on the church's website or you can watch it on Facebook. Uh, in both of them, they have the uh, archive versions of it and you can watch the entire service so you can be ready for this coming week service um, as we continue to preach through the series uh, of reprioritizing our lives. So bless you, bless you, bless you. Y'all have a great night. I will look forward to seeing you soon. And hey, wear your mask, wash your hands. Prayerfully, we will be out of this thing in a few months more, maybe four or five, six months more. Who knows? But um, everybody do your part. In the, in the meantime, all right? God bless you. Love you. Good night.